the description of the Quran. He writes, For 1,500 years this garden of spices bloomed around Marib. That was until 542 BC. Then the dam burst. The importunate desert crept over the fertile lands and destroyed them. The people of Sheba, says the Quran, had beautiful gardens in which the most costly fruits ripened. But then the people turned their backs upon God. Wherefore he punished them by causing the dam to burst. Thereafter nothing but bitter fruit grew in the gardens of Sheba. The dam that may be considered the most important source of the people of Saba's wealth and well-being was also the means of that ungrateful people's destruction. After the disaster of the Arim flood, the area turned into a desert, and as the agricultural fields disappeared, the people of Saba lost their most important source of revenue. The people of Saba, who ignored God's call to believe in Him and give thanks, were thus chastised. Following the terrible damage wreaked by the flood, the people of Saba began to fall apart. They abandoned their homes and migrated to northern Arabia, Mecca, and Syria. Marib, where the people of Saba had once dwelt, was now a desolate ruin and is most definitely a warning to everyone who commits the same mistakes as the people of Saba. One of the most ancient civilizations in the world is that of Egypt. Their discovery of writing around the 3rd millennium BC, the use they made of the river Nile, and the way they defended themselves from attack all played a major role in allowing that civilization to advance. Ancient Egypt rested on one of the world's great natural wonders, the River Nile. Thanks to the fertility of this river, which stretches from one end of the continent of Africa to the other, the Egyptians were able to engage in agriculture without having to depend on the rainy seasons. The historian Ernst Gombrich makes the following comments on the subject. Africa is hot. It does not rain for months. Many parts of the continent are therefore arid. Those regions are covered in desert. That is the case to the right and left of Egypt. It rains very infrequently in Egypt, but there is not that much need for rain because the river Nile flows right through the middle of the country. Given its enormous strategic importance, he who controlled the Nile also controlled Egypt's most important source of trade and agriculture. In other words, its very life.
Ancient Egyptian rulers built a mighty kingdom by that means. They would later come to be known as Pharaoh. The ancient Egyptians possessed a deviant belief in a great many gods. They were fiercely devoted to that belief because of their terrible bigotry. The people of ancient Egypt were greatly influenced by their natural environment. The country's physical geography protected it very well from external threats. Egypt was surrounded by deserts, mountainous lands and seas on all sides. There were two routes for an attacker to enter the country and it was a simple task for the Egyptian army to defend them. The Egyptians remained isolated from the external world thanks to these natural factors. Over the centuries, that separation turned into harsh bigotry. Closed to new developments and reform, they clung fiercely to their beliefs. Life after death formed the most important component of Egyptian belief. It was believed that the soul survived after the death of the body and that the soul of the deceased was held to account. Scales were brought and witnesses summoned, and the good and bad deeds of the deceased were discussed. Then the judge, God, reached his verdict. Those whose good deeds weighed heaviest in the scales would lead a life of endless joy, and those whose evil deeds weighed heaviest would suffer eternal torment. It is impossible not to see that the Egyptians' belief in the afterlife showed parallels with monotheistic belief and the true religion. This shows that ancient Egyptian civilization had once been part of the true religion